I went to preach somewhere in the southern region of Africa. And I got into the place. Maybe they expected someone bigger, but I was so lanky. And the expectation was punctual because I don't look like someone that can command deliverances unto Jacob. And if you don't know how to manage that situation, it will make you small. But I went into the place of prayer and the God inside of me was ready to make a statement. You know, when people despise you, that's when God rises up to defend his name on your life. Yes, I came to the platform. There were thousands of people on the field. And I began to preach the gospel. I don't know how they organized it, but they put a crippled boy on the stage so that I would not deny that I didn't see him. So what I did was I, I, I deliberately decided not to, you know, I walk on stage. I, I didn't walk that way. I started walking this side, preaching the gospel, preaching about the Holy Ghost. And one of those times when I turned back, the guy was shaking like a ball. He was not only born crippled, his legs were twisted and dry. He began to shake like a ball. Like this. Before I knew it, he was on his feet standing. I knew that it had nothing to do with what happened. I knew it because I couldn't tell you that I was, it had anything to do with my faith. I didn't believe. The boy could walk, so I limited my motion from the pulpit. I, I, I go this side. I go this. So what was happening there had nothing to do about. It. And the guy rose up, and the mother began to roll on the ground because he has never walked. He was nine years old. The moment the guy began to take steps, five other people that were using crutches got angry with their crutches, threw them away, and began to walk. Began to walk. And I, I also did not have anything to do with the guys that were walking, that threw their crutches away. It was their own faith that was at work. I was, I, I was a spectator like every other person on the field. Do you know what happened? The crowd ran to touch my clothes. So the police now arrested me and took me in their van to my resting place. We were not supposed to have any service that evening again. It was just a morning service. By evening, uncountable numbers of people have trooped out of the villages. Trooped out of the villages in Zambia, villages in Tanzania. They have put sick people in wheelbarrow. And they have joined it for two days to meet the evangelists, the healing evangelists that came from Nigeria. They had to call me and beg me that even though you don't have a session again, they are gathered. They are gathered. So, you know what happened? When I left the place, the hand of God was still on the meeting. And the seat that I sat on the stage, the people joined the straight line, then they'll give you like two minutes to sit on the seat. And a woman sat on the seat and she began to prophesy accurately. And they were writing her utterances. People were sitting and getting healed. People were touching the pulpit and getting healed. Oh, the angel of healing was standing there and the healing balm was flowing out. They say, bring the Nigeria. Bring the Nigeria. Bring the Nigeria. And when I came, I saw the crowd. That was, that was when I started seeing crowd. I saw the crowd and the only thing I did was to say, in the name of Jesus. The miracles that was all I did. That was all I did. In the name of Jesus. And blind eyes began to open. Deaf ears began to hear. Crippled people began to stand up. People carried in the wheelbarrows began to shake and began to walk. 
the police had to arrest me again. Me, myself, I was amazed because all of my preaching in Nigeria, I've never seen that kind of thing. So I had to go to one and say, what are you doing? His spirit is involved. It's not your, oh my, it's not about you. Healing, 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 healing. We left the ground. Healing continued until midnight, 2 a.m. You know, I tell you people, it's only in Makodi I'm not strong. Yeah. It's only here. We went for baptism. The guys that gave their life to Christ, 200 and something people. So we took them for baptism to the river. And we began to sing. And the song was in their language. I didn't even understand it. And the Holy Ghost, His presence came through the song. Then when I entered into the water to start baptism, the Lord spoke to me and said, Today is Beth, Bethsaida, Bethsaida. So, and I know the place, I know the scripture. That was how God began to heal with the water. He healed from 12 o'clock to 4 p.m. in the evening. With water. I left the place, I said, what is happening? So when we were going back, you know, when I arrived, their headquarters, the airport, they took me to one guy. He had a scan that his muscles were torn. I saw the scan. I prayed for him. Before I went to the village, did the crusade, came back. He went for another scan and the muscles were replaced. I saw it with my eyes. I saw it with my eyes. From that day, and, and it was not as if the anointing on me increased or I felt the presence of God in an unusual way. No, I knew this was not me. This was God. This was not even the angels that worked with me. This was an angel that was deployed directly from heaven that was doing that, those miracles. When I went back to ask God, God now said, there are angels that work with your ministry and there are angels that work by his own directive. That he just sent one of the angels that worked by his directive and that was the one working. It's not even the angels that work with me. That a day will come in the future when that angel will be permanently stationed. Yes, he told me about that day. And healings of all kinds, miracles of all kinds, we begin to take place. See, God is confirming it. Hallelujah. The miracles of all kinds will begin to take place. From what I see in the spirit, he wants to start this year. From what I see. It's not about you. Who are the sons of Anak? Who is Goliath? Before God. Somebody is coming out already. You are coming out already. You are coming out already. I was on my way back. And when, what happened? Okay, my driver. We got to the headquarters of that country. I don't want to mention the country. So that they will take me to the airport. But my flight was 11 o'clock in the night. We got to the headquarters from the village by 7 o'clock in the evening. So my driver now said, Man of God, can I take you to my father-in-law's house so that you bless them? I said, okay, why not? We got to the place. When we got to the place, his father-in-law was deaf. His mother-in-law was crippled. So I now went to the father-in-law because they have a way of speaking to him. I said, Jesus, then they will do like this. Wants to open your ear, then they will do like this. All right? Then I went to him that I want to pray, then they do like this. I had not started praying. I just put my hand on the ear, then the ear is now open. The man said, I can hear. Uh -uh. You can what? We have not prayed. He stood up. I can hear. I can hear. Hear! And then he began to dance with that music. I was expecting his wife to stand up and dance with him. Then I realized she couldn't walk. So I now reasoned in myself. I said, okay, if God hear this one, this is my this meal. 
If God healed this one, it means God. Huh? So I now went to the woman. This one, I was not led to. I just, is my calculation. I said, if God healed this one, um, God will. That's why I went to the woman and I said, the Lord Jesus, whom I serve, say you should walk. Meanwhile, that, that instruction I gave, there was fear in my heart. It was fear. I just, I just, <laughs> I just spoke. I said, the Lord Jesus, whom I serve, say you should walk. Then I held her hand, she fell down. Then the remaining faith, all, oh, in fact, the faith left. It was just one strand. And people were already watching. Then I raised her up. When I raised her up, I pushed her. She staggered. And the woman began to walk. She began to walk. Guess what? My driver began to cry. The first son of the house now came came into the sitting room and spoke in his heart and said, all these false prophets. He said it in his heart. I heard it live like a voice. And I went to him and said, you call me false prophet? He denied. I touched him. He fell under the power. <laughs> all of this, that was the first time I saw real food. It was in their house. Because when I, where I went to preach, oh my God, you don't need that food. They said, I should come and eat. I said, it's already time for my flight the man says see can you come into my room just lie on the bed so that i will know that some of what you carry will be on my bed the driver was driving me to the airport crying when we got to the airport there were military people everywhere and they saw that the man was crying they arrested me they say why did i make their citizen cry and then the man started crying more I didn't say anything. I was arrested. When he had finished crying, he now told them that all of them are in trouble. That this man that they arrested, he opened the ears of his father-in-law just now and caused his mother-in-law to walk this evening. It was from there he had been crying. Hey! The military people didn't like, like this. I'm telling you, all these things happened at the airport. It was through armed military men with escort that they escorted me to the plane. Armed men. I, 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 when I sat on the plane, I, people were sleeping. I, I couldn't sleep. I was asking God, okay, what just happened now? It's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about the Holy Spirit of the living God. It's not about you. It's about the Holy Ghost. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Somebody needs to rejoice in the Lord Jesus. Lord. I have mighty expectations concerning your life that during the course of this year, you will go beyond the limitations that have held you bound in the name of Jesus Christ. I came back home humbled. The reason why you have not heard this story is because I didn't have any release to tell it for years. In the place of prayer, God told me that that is the realm of healing that I'm taking you into. That's your future. I just showed you a glimpse that it's not my power it's not my mind it is by the spirit by the spirit by the spirit now we're going to do something in the next two minutes you just speak in tongues for two minutes just for two minutes oh my god those of you online follow in follow in just speaking in tongues for two minutes two minutes the hand of God is strong here. The hand of Jesus is strong. The hand of Jesus is strong. Sabose salito combre. Sagaito cantelia. Resco filamando. Bore cancelli. Bore cansamalanda. 
Goreka Kuria, Goreka Samateli, Adabro Scontele, Adabro Sandele, Adabro Comberanda, Esco Sila, Esco Sabalande, Esco Ponda, Ella Bonde, Ella Sabalite, Ica Branda Babola, Eca Diatete, Aprosqueta Branda Babori Bacadia, Eco Seminantelia, Alama Massata, Ebra Massata. Asakunda, Asamandele, Asaseli, Asasoriande, Asakonda, Abranda Dez, Abranda Babonde, Rata Basanda Babonde Bakaya. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to ask of you a favor. That you will convince everyone in this hall that you are greater than their fears. You are greater than the witches that have resisted them. You are greater than the barricades that have stood before them in destiny. That you will prove to everyone here and everyone online. Oh my God, the testimony of your mind, the testimony of your mighty hand, the testimony of the ability of your spirit. That during the course of this year, you will do that which they never expected. In the name of Jesus Christ. Confound the wisdom of the wise. Do incredible things beyond our imagination in the name of Jesus Christ. Cause a little one to become a thousand. Cause a small one to become a strong nation. Even those among us that are small, Cause, oh God, their lives to increase in the name of Jesus Christ. When they shall say there is a casting down, put a song on our lips that we might sing that there is a lifting up in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. This sermon was downloaded from www.spiritnerds.org. We equip Christians with thousands of strategic spiritual materials daily. Join millions of Christians around the world who have come to Spirit Nerds to learn about God and His Word today.